So uh, just a few words about Taptica, a few buzzwords about Taptica. So Taptica uses technology like programmatic media buying and contextual user profiling to make sure that we're sending the most relevant user to each and every application that we're working with. And we were very lucky to work with the most interesting companies in the industry, including King and EA and Zynga and Disney and Expedia. And for all of these companies, we are uh, helping them acquire relevant users to their application. And since we are a Taptica, are uh, all about committing to the bottom line, all about committing to results, I want to commit to the results of this session. So just write down my commitment and make sure that I'm meeting this commitment at the end of the session, okay? So my commitment to you in the session is that when you're gonna walk out of here, you're gonna get five times better results from your uh, mobile campaign, assuming you'll do everything I say. You're gonna know that PMS is not what you think it is. It's a totally different thing. You're gonna know that CPI is, does, doesn't really matter. It's not the very important thing you should track and you should stop worrying about your CPIs. And the most promising thing, you're gonna find your balance points. You don't want to stick out for this one. So you decided to start marketing your application. This is a smart thing and now let's see how we're gonna do it. So you're thinking, okay, I'm gonna start marketing my application. Let's start with bidding the lowest bid I can, and if I get tracked user, that's great, it's a win-win, I'm paying low money, getting a lot of users, that's great, right? Wrong. Because actually in mobile advertising, when you're bidding less, you're getting less engaged users. And if you think about it, this is really makes sense. The more you pay, the better you get a chance to get to good media sources and get good users, right? That's right, but this is actually not what you're looking for. Because when you're having a mobile campaign, you're actually looking for the two Vs. You're looking for the value, you want to get engaged users, but you also want volume, because just getting five very good users a day, that's not good enough. You want to get 500, 5,000, 5 million very good users a day. So how do I find the balance point between value and volume? What would be the balance between both of them? The answer to this question is PMS. Post-install events, multi-level pricing, and substantiate. It actually goes for trial and error, and thank you, John, for this word that you will help me with it. So let's go about the PMS and see what it actually means. P stands for post-install events, and for me, working in the marketing and mobile industry for 12 years or more, I think that post-install events is the single most important thing that happened to mobile marketing in the last few years. Because we all know that just tracking installs, it's not good enough. We're not looking for installed users. We're looking for engaged users. We're looking for users who will keep playing our game and keep going back to our game again and again. But up until like a year ago, we couldn't really track these things. We couldn't actually know. Not we couldn't know, and the marketing people that were working with us couldn't really know if the users are actually engaged with the games. But ever since the has offers and addicts and all these companies came up with the post install events, now we can actually track what happened with the user after the um, game installed. We can actually see whose user is coming on the second day, which user is coming back on the seventh day, how much money user is spending on our game. If it's a non-game application, is the user actually booking a flight, scheduling, subscribing to a service, and so on and so on. And we as a marketers are the, not only one who can actually see these things, we can actually post these events to the DSPs that are working with us. So now these DSPs themselves can know what our users are doing and could be in, make sure that they are sending us only engaged users. So the P stands for post-install events and you need to make sure that you are tracking post-install events and publishing these things to the DSPs that are working with you. So now after the PID, we have the um, multi-level pricing. And here I want to quote my very 
good friend Deepak from Machine Zone. Machine Zone are doing a very good job in marketing their application. And Deepak says, and I really subscribe to this, there is no such thing as a bad media, only wrong pricing. Every media can drive users to your application, just depends how much you're willing to pay for this media source. And let me just run quickly through an example here. So let's say that you have a target of 4% of the users that you want for your game, 4% of the users that are going to be a paying user in the first week. So this is your goal. Now see, let's try to see how we can find the balance point and how we can actually reach this goal. So in the first week of your campaign, you're bidding $2. You're bidding $2 across the board for all of the media sources that you're working with, okay? So the first week, we bid $2, and for media number one, for we, we bid $2, we got 4%, everything is great, we don't need to change everything, it's working. Media number two, we bid $2, and we got 7.5%. This is almost double of our target. It makes sense to pay much more for this media source and get many, many more of these great users that we're seeing here. So it makes sense to increase the bid in media number two to 35 Media number three, we bid $2, and we got only 2.5% engaged users. This is lower than our target, that's as bad. It's not that bad if we're changing the bid. Now we're bidding $1.2 instead of two. So the bottom line here is, this is exactly the balance point between volume and value I was mentioning before. We're bidding everything right now between $1.2 to three and a half. And we got many users because we're just bidding a according to each and every media source, and our users are actually meeting our target of 4% conversion to paying users. So this is the balance point between value and volume being reached by multi-level pricing. And the last thing here in the PMS is substantiate. And this is actually, as marketeers, you should consider yourself like a scientist in a lab. The great thing about mobile marketing is that you can experiment with everything. You can try everything, explore everything. Worst case scenario is you're gonna spend $500 on a trial that went bad. Not that bad, right? So you can try things like bidding 50%, 100% higher than your regular bid. Maybe you can get great traffic and perfect users that you didn't reach before. Or can maybe even bid lower. Let's try instant traffic. Maybe we can bid 50 cents and get more volume to our campaign. You can experiment with creatives, with messages, with everything that comes to mind. And the more creative you get, the more chance you have to get different audiences and more and more and more engaged users. So we went over the PMS, but now to make sure that we remember this, let's just practice this. And um, the practice will be reviewing a client that we had in Taptica. I can't reveal his name, but this client was nice enough to allow me to use his actual number. So what you're seeing here is an actual number for a case study on seeing how the PMS helped us get better results for one of our clients. So the client was a utility app. The initial bid was $4. They're bidding $4 to get more installs. And the challenge was lower cost per paying user. Because when this client reached our services, they were paying $80 for every paying user they got. So for, and, and this was very high for them, and they wanted to get the, lo the number lower. So let's see how PMS helped them here. So the first one will be P, post install events. They added post install event and send it the information to us. So now we could know every time one of the users paid in their application, we could have known. This was very helpful for us to close down all the media sources that were not generating paying users. So this was the P. The multi-level pricing, so you remember we said that it started with $4. Now they were paying everything between two to eight, and the average was 4.9, not that far away from what they started, but at least we got the entire range between two to eight dollars to buy user for them. And the experiment we did, 
was adding uh, instant traffic, paying half a dollar per user. And remember that I said that there is no such thing as bad media. So sometimes it actually makes sense to pay half a dollar for incentivized traffic and get more volume to this application. So these are the things we have done, and let's just see the results and see how we actually were able to get more re better results for them. So the same application, now they're bidding not $4, but everything between half a dollar to eight. Can someone guess what their cost per uh, booking is right now? It was 80 before. Anyone want to throw the extra wild guess? Rivi, I know you know the answer, so don't tell anyone. 14 were good, not that good, but were good. So the cost was 19. We started from 18 and going to 19. It means that now for every $100 that they're paying, they're getting not one user, but five users, which is quite awesome, let's just admit this. So um, this is pretty much the thing that I want to say about PMS and how to get better results. Now let's see that I kept my promise, just to make sure that what I actually committed to happened. So hopefully now you know how to get five times better results on your campaign when you're having a mobile campaign. Hopefully now you know that PMS is actually a good thing in mobile advertising. Now you know that CPI doesn't really matter because you can have different CPIs per media source, but the important thing is how many engaged users and what the user is actually doing in your game after you, boil, you bought this game and hopefully you find your balance point. That's I'm not sure. I can ask about questions or can you can, <laughs> anyone? How many different channels um, do you need to use? I mean, on average, how, what do you see? What are the best practices in terms of, of channels? And obviously there are different phases throughout the life cycle of the app, but I mean, I don't know if you can elaborate uh, a little bit more on, on what do you see on soft launch and then once the, the app is tested and, and iterated, or at least on the early phases, how many channels do you move, uh, do you move forward with? Yeah, it's a good question and thank you for that. So actually, what, since you are buying on RTB systems and we have access to millions of millions of, uh, of channels, what we're trying to do is in the first two weeks, open the campaign on as many channels as possible because even though we ran 15 different slot games, just for instance, every slot game has its own target audience. So we're trying to open each and every campaign on as many media sources as possible the first two weeks and to give the campaign the best chance it has to find the exact pocket of media for and the exact amount of users that they're looking for. And then after two weeks, 50% of the channels are being closed down and the rest are being optimized with different prices. Eventually, after months and two months, and this is an ongoing process, it can um, take up to a year, eventually we are finding around 10 to 20 different media sources that are really working for each and every campaign and this across all categories, it doesn't necessarily have to be what we think it is. I mean, if it's slot game, it has to be something for, uh, I mean, a, a, a media source for a 40 years old woman. Not necessarily this is the case, but after like three, four months of experimenting, we're gonna find 10 to 20 different media sources that are perfectly the right thing for our traffic. And what you're gonna see is that these media sources will continually renew themselves and exchange, and this is, a year from now, it's not going to be the same 20, but maybe 20 others. Um, I'm okay. Oh, sorry. So there's a ton of inventory in the RTB space, and you had talked about spending smaller budgets at times, potentially to kind of make sure you're comfortable. How would you spend, say, a $500 budget across the RTB space when it's easy to spend um, you know, thousands and thousands, and to still give yourself sort of the best chance at success? What we're seeing is that sometimes a range, it, it's, and it's a good question because there are thousands and thousands of, of media sources, but what we're seeing from our experience is everything for 500 to $5,000 per experiment actually gives you the answer because after 
few hundred clicks and a few dozen in stores, you can pretty much get an answer that will be relevant to your question, even if you're going to pay 10 times better than that. And this is the smart thing about programmatic media buying. The technology is doing most of the work for you. You don't have to have a human resource that will calculate and analyze the information and then spend $50,000 before you know something. This was the case two years ago. Now the technology knows things pretty soon. So again, from what I experience, $500, $1,000, if the engine says this is the right target audience, it's going to stay this way. Do any of these guidelines or any of these uh, hints change if we're talking about user reacquisition as opposed to acqu first acquisition? So you're talking about targeting or retargeting. So another interesting question, the user profiles stay the same. So um, if you're finding a specific profile that works for targeting, it will pretty much stay the same with the retargeting. The thing that is actually changes is the message. Because for retargeting, you have different stages of the user's lifetime value. You had a user that start using the game, he was paying money, he was enjoying the game, and went dormant after like three days or four days or a month. And you have to have a specific message to this user saying, dear user, you used my game, why you want to come again? Same time you have users that just installed once and never used the game. For this user, you need to have a different message. So messaging in the retargeting part, messaging is the key parameters. The, st the rest stays pretty much the same. Do we have a question over here? Um, Hi, I think you might have answered it um, indirectly. <coughs> Uh, it's a broad stroke question. Do you find any pattern using your PMS as a framework in North America, uh, Europe, Western Europe specifically, and Asia in general? Like broad stroke question there. Yeah, broad and, and interesting because there are different patterns within the different territories. But the basic, I mean, there are so many differences between this countries and territories, and I don't have the time to get into all of them, but the basic structure of the PMS, you need to in track users and user engagement in every part of the world after they install. So the P stays the same. In terms of multi-level pricing, in every part of the world, you need to pay the right price for every media source. And in every part of the world, it makes sense to experiment. Only the experiments are really, really different between uh, the different countries and different territories. So the structure stays the same. The implementation and the actual case studies are really, really different. Thank you all. <laughs> <laughs>